Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well today we're going to put these amps on the audio analyzer suite and we're going to do some testing about something that I've never really played with a whole lot before and that is the value of the grid leak resistor on the output tube and what that changes as far as the sonic and distortion performance of a tube amplifier. And I never really thought much about it and I just always assumed that we wanted to have the driver tube have as easy a load to drive as possible and so I normally run the grid leak resistors close to what the maximum they say is allowable to try to make an easy load on the driver tube. And one of the things you guys have been following me for a long time have seen that my amps have a good bit of second order harmonic distortion and that the third order is nice and low but they do have one to two percent of second order harmonic distortion but people really like the way my amps sound and I like the way they sound and I think that I may have accidentally been creating that by my choice of grid leak resistor but I don't want to spoil it so let's watch the testing okay so we've got this pair of 2A3 mono blocks hooked up to the audio analyzer suite and these amps are identical down to the tubes and everything other than we experimented with changing the value of the grid leak resistor. A 2A3 tube can stand up to a 500k grid leak resistor and this amp came with a 47k grid leak resistor with a 1.0 UF coupling cap that was a standard type Mundorf coupling cap, film cap. And on the other amp, we changed the grid leak resistor to a 330K with a 0.22 UF aluminum oil coupling cap. So we're going to look here at what that change does to the THD versus power. We're also going to look and see how this impacts the frequency response. And then we're going to look at the THD versus frequency and then compare the second and third order harmonics and see what this change did. So first of all, we're going to run the THD versus frequency. And you can see here, especially in this under one watt range, the smaller has lower THD. It's got about a half a percent less. You get up to one watt. Similar, got about a half a percent distortion with the small resistor and 1.2% with the larger resistor. And then at three watts, which is probably about the peak that I would run this amp at. You got 2% distortion with the large resistor and about 1% distortion with the small resistor. So, definitely a difference between the two of these. The next thing we want to look at is the frequency response. And this is the slight difference in the volume level, which is pretty minuscule. It's you know about three quarters of a dB. But the thing to note here is on the low end, down at 20 hertz, the one with the smaller resistor has probably got about a quarter of a dB less roll off, which may or may not even be audible. Once you get up to 40 hertz, they're both flat, 
but then you note the one with the small resistor at about 5k it starts rolling off and by the time you get to 10k you've lost about a half a db and then you can see it nosedives pretty big after that i mean i'm not real concerned about this area in here i've said that before but you will note that at 10k the larger resistor with the 0.22 uf cap which is the red line is doing better so the final thing we want to look at is the thd versus frequency and again the smaller resistor has lower overall thd but here's the interesting part when we look at the second order harmonics only you can see the small resistor has a lot lower second order harmonics which is the good kind that we do want to hear out of a tube amp and then when we look at the third order harmonics the amps are identical so what this is showing me is changing that grid leak resistor added some second order harmonics and again the owner of these amps sent them to me complaining that they sounded too sterile to him and he couldn't really hear any difference between these and a solid state amp and i can see why looking at these results on the audio analyzer suite and i think going to the larger value grid leak resistor with the smaller value coupling cap has added some second order harmonics which is going to make these sound more like you would expect from a tube amp now some people might like the super low distortion but to me if that's what you're looking for and you're not looking for an amp that's going to add second order harmonics to the sound you might as well just listen to a solid state amp so finally let's go back and look at the scope and this is the 1k square wave and we'll pop this and get refresh this again and you can see here this red channel with the 330k resistor has a little more ringing on the front end here and in my experience a little bit of ringing here at the start as long as it you know quickly dies off makes the amp sound more lively so it's likely just listening to it it's going to sound better at least to my ears with it set up that way and then let's look at the 10k square wave and you can see this channel with the larger value or 330k resistor has more of a square look to the wave and the low resistor has this little dipsy doodle here at the start of it which it's probably going to have a cleaner sounding high frequency with the smaller cap and the larger value resistor so yeah i'm happy with the way this turned out i think that i'm going to do the same thing to the other channel put a larger value resistor with the aluminum oil coupling cap and i don't think it's the type of coupling cap that we're seeing here what we're seeing here with this distortion curve is the difference between the two values of grid leak resistors and it's one of the reasons i use pretty high value grid leak resistors when I'm building my amps is it tends to add second order harmonics which is what we're seeing here you can see how much more second order harmonics that it has and when you switch from like the third order to the THD see how little the blue line moves and then see how much the red line moves which is telling me that 
we're getting mostly second order harmonics in this extra distortion, which I think is going to solve what the owner of these amps was complaining about and that they didn't have any tube sound. So I think we got a win here and looks like a great place to wrap up this video. So as you can see, definitely makes a difference in the amount of second order harmonic distortion that the amplifier creates by the size of the grid leak resistor. Now I do want to follow up after I did that audio analyzer suite testing and I wasn't recording this part, I swapped the tubes from one amp to the other and some of the third order harmonic distortion moved with the tubes because I don't know if you remember one of them was a little higher than the other that moved with the tubes and maybe you know 0.2% of the second order harmonic distortion also moved with the tubes it was mainly the sixes and sevens were different when I would swap those out it would follow that tube and historically I found that when an amplifier changes when you move a tube of the exact same brand and type from one you know one tube to the other and you see a pretty big jump in the some part of the performance that the tube's probably not biased ideally and i think these tubes are running as um, direct coupled and sometimes when you're doing that, you have to make compromises and where the tube's biased so you get the right grid voltage off the plate of the other one. Or what. It, yeah, that, and that sometimes just kind of goes with the territory on the amp design. It's probably why I'm not going to copy this amp design for my 2A3 amp, although these are nice sounding amps. And I do think that raising the value of the grid leak resistor and lowering the size of the coupling cap did improve the sonic performance. It makes these now sound like what I would expect a tube amp to sound. That's the reason these things are even at my house. The guy that bought these was disappointed that it didn't sound like a tube amp or didn't sound any different than a solid state amps. And he emailed me and I was like, I don't know what's going on, but you know, I'd be happy to look at them if you'll send them to me. And then the first thing I noticed was the thermal issues, which we dealt with in another video. But then I did see the super low harmonic distortion, you know, in the 1 to 2 watt range, which would mean that you're not going to hear any tube second order harmonic distortion, which it didn't have before. And I think the change we made on that one resistor and capacitor combo is going to give this customer what they were looking for because before then we were saying you know I was telling them, well you may have to just hook a color preamp up to it and dial in some harmonic distortion to get that tube sound and then he's like well then why am I running these hot running amplifiers in my house if they're just gonna be like a solid state and I get you know before there were solid state amplifiers there were a lot of amplifiers designed to emulate that super low harmonic distortion that we hear in solid state gear. But I think in 2024, that's not what people are buying tube amps for, that they are looking for some imperfectness, if that's even a word. So anyway, I think we got a win here. And pretty sure this customer is going to be super happy. I hope I didn't screw myself out of selling a color preamp to him. He said he's probably going to buy one anyway, but just got a joke in there. But, but anyway, um, it was an interesting learning experience to me. And it'll be something I can try in the future if I've got an amp that seems to have too much harmonic distortion that maybe lowering the value of the grid leak resistor could tame that a little bit if it needs to be or it's just another tuning tool, and I would not have guessed that 
that really would have any impact on the Sonics until I did it on this amp. So I learned something. I hope you learned something. Please comment what you think about this, if that makes sense to you. It, it does when I sit down and think about it. And I do like, though, running as small a coupling cap as possible. I think they sound better than the big ones. But sometimes you have to run the big ones. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed this series. This is kind of going to be it for these two A3 amps. That The guy's going to come pick them up and be one project off my list of things that I've got to do, which is helpful. And again, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Thanks to all you Patreon supporters. Really appreciate you, plus all you regular viewers. And until the next video, have a nice day. Mm -hmm.